Okay, well, it's that magic hour. I think we're going to get started. Um, I have uh, kind of an ambitious um, uh, outline here, and we'll see uh, <laughs> see how much we cover. Um, I, first of all, I just want to thank you all for coming today, and um, <clears throat> and uh, thank the friends of Sheldon Jackson Museum for hosting these lecture series and thank um, uh, Jackie Fernandez Hamburg for organizing these things. Um, it, it, it's a pretty cool way to, to spend the um, spend the COVID days. And so um, I, I hope this is uh, informative for you. Um, what, what I'm what I'm going to um, cover is uh, a, a few basics about our, our uh, Schlinget form line design. And I'm going to uh, start off talking about two dimensional form line, which is uh, pretty much like bas relief, uh, the real shallow carving. Um, the, the two dimensional form line. When I talk about form line, I'm going to uh, refer to it as classical form line. When I'm talking about classical form line, that's the design style that, uh, that um, kind of reached its peak it, it, with the introduction of metal tools. In the late 1800s and the early 1900s, the uh, form line design um, took some uh, really drastic uh, uh, progress um, <clears throat> with the with the use of uh, metal tools that actually changed the uh, the uh, form line itself. And I'm not going to go into detail yet because um, that's going to uh, that's going to come up later as we start going through the rules of design. So I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I, I became interested in our our form line design at an early age. I, I was uh, in fourth grade. No, wait a minute. I, I was in uh, second and third grade when we were living in Michigan and my father uh, loved to carve. He carved small model uh, totems and canoes. And I, I used to like to watch him in Michigan. He had a small uh, carving room in part of our uh, part of our house in Michigan. And I think when he got homesick, <clears throat> um, he he reverted to to the artwork which um, connected him to our culture and our people and, and our traditions. And, and that's what it seems to do for me too. That's a really fond memory I have of, of my father carving in that room and me watching him. Um, <clears throat> and uh, a, another uh, really nice memory I have is how I got involved in carving so I, I started uh, getting involved in form line design at a really early age. I've been doing form line design for going on 50 years, I think. And, uh, but I haven't been carving as long. I, I took up carving in my senior year of high school in Juneau. And uh, in the, in the um, early 70s, the Indian uh, Education Act uh, what was starting to bring um, uh, native programming into the public schools. And in Juneau, we had uh, Clinket language and, um, and uh, uh, wood carving. And I, I really felt like a misfit in Juneau because uh, we, we moved to Juneau from Cake and I've always been a small town boy. And I really felt out of place in Juno, and um, I, I didn't care for school at all. I, I really wanted to quit. I was ready to quit. And, but um, the things that kept me in school was the uh, Schlinget language 
I had a really nice uh, Lingit teacher, Mrs. Cecilia Kuntz, and uh, and my carving teacher, Peter Bibb, and uh, <clears throat> and we learned how to carve together, and it kept me in school. So I, I can say that um, that really uh, changed the direction of my life. I hate to think of what would have happened if I dropped out of high school. So uh, I have those two fond memories and uh, they, they keep me uh, in love with this art form and uh, they keep the art form feeling very precious to me for those reasons. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So I, I wanna start talking about, um, about two-dimensional form line and I have, um, I have some images to show you, and I have a different uh, document camera that that I'll be switching to, so you don't have to stare at me uh, and uh, <clears throat> while while I while I show you things. Um, the the books that I um, am using as reference. Let me reach over here. Uh, this one is uh, oops, it's backwards. Um, it's uh, Northwest Coast Indian Art: An Analysis of Form by Bill Holm, and uh, this is this is really if you want to understand form line, this is uh, considered the uh, artist's the form line artist's bible. Uh, Bill Holm was the uh, curator at the uh, at the um, Burke Museum in Seattle, University of Seattle, for many many years, and he really um, he really um, analyze the heck out of this art form and uh, I really highly recommend that book if you're interested in in form line. So let's get to the design now. Um, let me see how I switch this camera here. So uh, this design here is something that you you see uh, these types of shapes almost like a boomerang shape on uh, carved bent wood box ends and they're really fun to uh, trace to learn the shapes um, you, you get a you get a taste of every shape that I'm going to be talking about you get to practice the ovoid here that's the basic ovoid with the inner ovoid and then this head in the middle is called the floating ovoid. Now this particular head here is referred to as a salmon trout's head and we're gonna be using that a lot today in this talk. Um, there's other shapes here that I'm gonna be um, talking about separately. Um, <clears throat> so form line is actually a, um, a framework and, and it's, it's a framework that holds these pieces together, these elements, these design elements. And there's really just a few elements with endless variations. So I already mentioned the ovoid shape. The way to learn is to uh, trace these shapes. There's nothing wrong with tracing. I always say that we're taught not to trace, but tracing uh, really uh, uh, gets the, uh, the mind body thing synchronized. So, so you almost uh, can uh, draw these shapes just from memory after, after you do this enough. This shape here is a U shape. And this shape here is an S shape. So you can also see that S shape in this uh, salmon trout's mouth. Uh, <clears throat> so those are the three shapes and uh, <clears throat> the, these, this design here was taken from Bill Holmes' uh, book cover. I just uh, subtracted the background from it so you could just look at the, uh, at the form line. So you can see this is really a combination of one, two, three, four U shapes and one ovoid. And the U shapes have filler designs. The red shapes are called the tertiary filler designs. 
and there are lots of variations of the U. There's the split U. There's this double split U. Here's another split U. And then uh, uh, these, uh, these uh, filler shapes here too. <clears throat> Some of the uh, shapes that we're talking about are just going to be resulting shapes from combining two of these uh, two of these shapes together, and when we do that, it forms a, a third area, such as this area in here. This uh, area around the um, salmon trout's head is a resulting shape, and it results when we. So the bottom line of the ovoid is actually a thin line and then it tapers and it gets wider toward the top. And then it tapers again. These, these are really horrible um, examples, but, the, but you'll get the idea. And then the floating ovoid. So, <clears throat> so it's a thin line on bottom, a thick line on top. And then the inner, the floating ovoid is kind of like a bubble in a, um, in a uh, level is the way I think of it. And then it's got a really fine line around it, which when you paint it or carve it, that thin line around it really makes that middle ovoid pop, pop out. And uh, <clears throat> so I'm gonna um, switch from this camera now. Let's see, how do I do that? Um, so I want to look at, um, I want to, hold on here. Here we go. Um, I want to, here we go. Okay, can everybody see these images? Okay, the, these are um, these are variations of ovoids, and it's just the outer ovoid. Um, this is from a page in Bill Holmes' um, Northwest Coast uh, Northwest Coast Indian Art, and. You can actually use these like templates. A long time ago, the um, native carvers actually did have templates, and, and they were uh, made out of bark. And, and you could um, you could place one of these ovoids inside the other, so that it's slightly offset, and then it gets it gets that uh, tapering and swelling effect. Notice that some of these ovoids are really stubby and some are really long. And that's because um, this art form is, uh, the, the word that comes to mind for me is I think of it as elastic. Like if you draw these shapes on a piece of um, stretchable rubber or plastic, you could stretch it onto any surface, uh, including a cylinder. Uh, and, and that's the uh, that's the idea of two-dimensional art being wrapped on a three-dimensional surface, such as a totem pole. So there's this whole page of uh, different uh, different ovoid shapes, and then um, I also mentioned the U shape. So here's three different types of split U shapes. Um, the the uh, this area here is actually very a very thin line. You'll see that when we get to the carved uh, rendition of these U shapes. Um, <clears throat> this is not a very common shape at all. Um, this this black shape is the U shape, and this is the split U in here. And this is actually negative space. It would be carved out. And uh, the reason you don't see this shape that much, you see it by, um, you see this shape in uh, graphic arts, uh, works done by people who haven't carved before. And that's because this would be really difficult to carve out, whereas something like this thin area here 
uh, would be uh, very, very simple, a lot less work. Uh, this is a split U with a, um, with a fine uh, little trough around it, little gouge. And over here, this is the, um, this is the uh, tertiary S shape. And let's see here. I see a couple. Oh. Hmm. Let's see here. I think you're only seeing thumbnails. This is this is what I'm seeing. Oh shoot. Um are are you seeing the full image now? Just the thumbnails? Yeah. Hmm. Oh darn. Still just seeing the thumbnails. Oh darn. Well, let me see. Is that still a thumbnail? Yep. Oh, shoot. Robert, you might need to go back into your share screen option and then select the one that's the image viewer. Uh, let me see here. content well i tried that okay let me stop sharing and then i'll try again sorry folks is that still doing the same thing yeah oh shoot hmm Okay, I think I'm going to have to do this one image at a time. How's that? Yeah, that's good. Okay, I got it. <clears throat> so just a, a different workaround. So these are the different um, ovoid shapes. And uh, uh, let's see, okay. <clears throat> these are the different ovoid shapes. So I was talking about some being real elongated and some being stubby. Um, you, you can actually stretch these out quite long. It all depends on the surface area that needs to be filled. Okay, so let's see now. Okay, so next one is uh, these U shapes I was mentioning, and uh, sorry, I, you were only seeing small thumbnails, so I didn't realize that. So this is that uh, weird U shape that I was talking about. You wouldn't want to carve that because there's so much uh, negative space in here to carve out. Uh, a carver would uh, more likely design split U shapes like these two here. And um, somebody who hadn't carved before would uh, probably draw something like that or some uh, some unusual shape and uh, <clears throat> the the reason I'm um, mentioning some of those uh, mistakes people make is so you can avoid them. Um, <clears throat> now they, these here are um, are different salmon trout's heads. <clears throat> They're really good to practice. Uh, like the first design that I showed you, these incorporate all the different shapes that you need to know in lots of different variations. You can see too here, um, some are very elongated and some are uh, rather stout. And uh, they're, they're, both, uh, they're both completely um, proper and accurate ovoid shapes just because they're stretched out a, a little more than uh, these other ones. So you can see it's got the nostril area um, uh, shown by this uh, U shape. 
It's got the mouth area shown by this tertiary S shape. It's got the eye area shown by this ovoid. And it's got this cute little cheek. <clears throat> There's lots of different cheek designs in that Bill Home book. It's fun to study. So they're uh, just like there are so many variations of the ovoid shape, there are many ov uh, variations of the salmon trout's head. I would encourage you to uh, trace these, try carving them, try painting them. Uh, it, it introduces you to all, all the basic uh, components of this art form. Let's see here. Here's a few more. Um, a few more salmon trout's heads. These are pretty neat. Now they're getting kind of complicated. <clears throat> and you can see um, the, only, the only thing that restricts you in coming up with variations is a lack of imagination. You can do so many different uh, variations of just simple shapes. Um, this, this design here um, uh, it, it's really nicely shaded in and I wanted to include that in here because it shows how these would be carved out. And that's when these shapes make sense is when you see them carved out. These are, um, these are uh, uh, carved out with a curved knife, which gives them that really soft effect. So here's a, um, here's a tertiary S shape with a split a, a type of a split U in it, except the, the except it's shaped like an S. It's not an actual split U. Pretty neat. Let's see here. And here's a um, here's a really informative one that <clears throat> really needs to be studied. And what you should notice here is this top one is actually the lines of the bottom one. Now these black lines on the bottom one, this is what's called form line. All the black is, uh, is the framework. All the black is the, uh, is the structure that, that contains the different elements, the U, the ovoid, the S, and the various cheek designs. So these are the lines, but, but these are not form line. This one is form line. Uh, and and uh, this shape here can be kind of tricky. So I'm gonna switch to a document camera and I'm gonna show you a mistake that is really common that makes your salmon trout head look a little wonky to the, uh, <clears throat> to the trained eye. Somebody would catch that right away. Um, but I'm gonna show you how to make a really nice uh, proper ovoid. And I'm gonna switch to the document camera next. Let's see here, just like this. And um, so, so here, let me zoom in a little closer. Oops. Let's see. I want to zoom in closer here. So <clears throat> this this top shape here is the one that's going to be a common mistake people make. And the mistake is it's easy for a beginner to think that this salmon trout's head is really the eye socket connected to a U shape. And all you need to do is draw in the, the mouth. But that's not true because there's a little bit of offset here. 
if I if I colored this in, and this, really this eye comes way over here, but I gave him a long nostril. So if I colored that in, it looks proper, but it's not. This it, it has a very flat, um, continuous, kind rather boring look. The proper way to design these salmon trout's heads is to go ahead and get your get your um, outer ovoid established, and then you start at the tip of the mouth. Okay, the bottom line is thin. This is just like same rule of the ovoid, the bottom line is thin. And then it's going to taper and get wider and wider. So I'm starting to draw the eye socket. Now here, I'm just going to draw the upper lip of the jaw, of the uh, upper lip line just to just to see where it's going to go and i can um, now i can start figuring out the eye and this now you see this top one here has a continuous straight line this one here does not this is offset from this lip line because this is now defining the eye socket. And that leaves you with a really nice cheek shape here. All you need to do is put a U shape in there and that's done. So that's, that's the uh, difference here. Um, if I was gonna, draw that in now. <clears throat> and now you can see this one here uh, would actually look a bit amateur because it looks so flat. It looks just, it looks like, uh, um, I'll name him Thud. It reminds me of somebody with, uh, somebody just uh, stomping on the ground and, and where this one looks a little more um, has tension in it because the lines are offset. So that's that's the difference. You want to do it like this one here. And let me see here. Okay. Let me change back to I'm going to switch back to, um, let's see here. Okay. Now this is really neat, neat here. Huh? Um, let's see here. I gotta figure out how to share this here. Um, can can you see this design, Chris? Okay, this one here is um, the front of a box and it, it shows the tertiary split U areas. It also shows the secondary red areas and the cheek designs, uh, tertiary U in the mouth. Here's that really neat uh, tertiary split S and this is the uh, tertiary S shape. 
the inner ovoid of the eye and the eye socket. So everywhere that it says tertiary, that's going to um, define a color. Wherever it says secondary, that's going to define a color. So that's, that's why I'm showing you this design here. When you assemble all the um, pieces, all you need to do is uh, create the black form line, the, which defines the creature. It creates the whole entire outline. And then you put in the secondary shapes and the secondary shapes are really based on the primary shapes. They're ovoids, U's, split U's, but they're gonna be painted red and they're filler designs. And then the tertiary areas are gonna be painted the real pretty blue green. So that's why I'm showing you this design here. Um, let's see here. There's one more. So when you put them all together, when you put them all together, you can see the, uh, the secondary shapes are red. Sorry about this bad color here. I tried to change it, but, um, but it tried to change the whole design. And, and these are the tertiary areas, the blue-green, the split U, the uh, tertiary S, uh, all, all the shapes that you're starting to recognize now. So this is what the coloration looks like. And, and the rules of color are based on the surface area. Which part of the design are, are we talking about? Is it primary? Is it secondary? Or is it tertiary? Uh, there's there's another color that's rarely used. Um, once in a while, you'll see white used around the eyes and in various other locations. But it's used very sparingly, um, <clears throat> and uh, more often than not, uh, the the negative areas will just be unpainted. Let me see. I have. Are you seeing a thumbnail or a big design, Chris? Huh? Hmm. Okay, this design here is one that uh, this whole talk is based upon. First of all, we, we talk about the very basic, uh, the black form line that defines the design. This is actually the end of a, a carved box here. So you, you see the ovoid, the floating ovoid, the U shape, uh, this would be a mouth shape here. And then the uh, tertiary S shape in here. So after you design the form line, then you start designing the secondary elements, the filler shape. So you can see these uh, really, really uh, creative uh, types of filling these areas here, the different types of uh, use, split use. So all the all these shapes in this uh, in this second image here, or the or the uh, secondary red shapes, in this image here, you see all the um, tertiary blue areas around the ovoids are almost always tertiary blue. You see around this eyelid is tertiary blue, around the um, around this uh, U shape is tertiary blue tertiary blue, S shape, and so on. And then when you put them all together, 
it creates a cohesive design. They flow really nicely together and the colors look so beautiful together. Now, this is what I want to show you. Um, and this is uh, what, what forms the basis of my lecture today is that in order to understand uh, these shapes and why they are the way they are, you need to look at the cross sections of the carvings. Um, so that uh, this U shape is carved out in different ways. We're going to actually do some close ups next. But I wanted you to see that cut up that uh, cross section here. And let's see what else do we have. Uh, I think that Where is that? Is that a um, thumbnail or is that a full image thumbnail? Let's see here. Sorry about that, folks. I'm just. This is a, <clears throat> you're probably looking at a thumbnail. Uh, let's see here, how can I do that? Sorry, folks. Okay, well, this is another, um, this is another uh, cross section where you can see how the, around that U shape is carved out. Um, so this shows that it's a, a straight cut, straight down here, and then a beveled cut toward the edges around here. And it's shallow carving, this is bas relief. But the way uh, the design sits on the board is it looks a lot deeper than it really is because of the uh, because of the cuts. And then all these shapes here, they're just uh, slight outlines. You just have uh, really fine lines. They don't need to be really wide. If you were just designing and you hadn't carved uh, your your shapes here, you'd probably have. Uh, real big gap in here, uh, real wide uh, area in here. So, so it's good to get practice carving. Um, <clears throat> here's the trough shape that's carved around the ovoid shapes, carved around the eyes. But sometimes you see these uh, rather than troughs, sometimes you'll see the edges cut straight down like here. So there's two different ways to carve around the ovoids. You could either use a curved knife and carve a trough all the way around it, or you could carve the uh, edges straight down and then do that beveled cut. And this is that uh, really nice little uh, cheek design with a U shape. So um, that will help you understand uh, how these designs are carved out and why these, why these um, shapes are outlined, it, it, really makes the, it really makes the inner ovoids stand out by having the outlines. Okay, now. Okay, I'm just reading the chats here. Um, <clears throat> so, so now you've seen now you've seen examples of um, 
of form line, of uh, the coloration, the rules of color, and um, <clears throat> the people people wonder uh, about the old colors. Why why did we choose those colors? Well, we we got our um, we got our pigments from the minerals in our immediate uh, geographical area. The the minerals. Uh, come from clays and from different types of um, uh, oxides, uh, iron oxide, and uh, and also from uh, charcoal for the black. So the most abundant mineral is the the mineral that um, the mineral that uh, is used for black, and that's why it's the dominant color. It's the most abundant mineral. And then the next most abundant mineral is the iron oxide color. And the least abundant material is the blue green. And that was used sparingly. Um, I've heard that there was a cave uh, <clears throat> somewhere on Kruzoff Island that had this coveted uh, blue green clay. And, uh, <laughs> and so it was used really sparingly because uh, it was uh, a valuable um, and rather rare uh, color. So now we've talked about the form line, we've talked about the color, and now now we're going to um, switch to a little bit about carving. I want to show you some of my um, some of my tools here. Actually, uh, this is this is just a piece that I, I painted um, last night. It's not perfect. I can already see flaws in it. <clears throat> um, but it's just going to be a practice piece. But I want to show you a few other pieces from our really cool hands-on loan program. The Sheldon Jackson Museum has a hands-on loan program for educators. Uh, it's currently... Um, uh, in mothballs until the uh, COVID crisis is passed. We, we can't be shipping um, items anywhere, but, uh, but, we're, um, but we have many cool um, objects that can be borrowed by educators to, to use in schools. And I borrowed some of our uh, form line carvings. which were donated to the hands-on program. And I just want to show you. Um, so that's the ovoid. And I'm going to show it to you from different angles so you can see how it's carved out. So you can see the, you can see the, uh, the fine line around it. You can see the tertiary area around the ovoid and then the black uh, ovoid itself. Like I said, this can be carved this way with the bevel, bevel going down to the edge, or it can be carved uh, with that really gentle trough to give it a really soft look. This has rather a hard edge look. These are a few examples of the uh, U shapes. This is the uh, tertiary split U with a red uh, fine line, and this is a uh, this is a secondary U painted red. And uh, these are more little more complicated uh, U shapes. We have this double split U here, and then a double secondary U here. So these these all have the same uh, same type of carving. They 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 cut straight down around the edge, and then uh, did a bevel cut toward the edge here. And then these. Um, <clears throat> these tertiary shapes. <clears throat> this this is the tertiary S shape. This is that uh, split 
secondary S. You can see it's an S shape. <clears throat> looks almost like a split U, except it's a split S. And this shape here uh, is actually, um, uh, so, some artists call it a trigon shape, but it's really just a um, negative area. You see that um, a, a lot of times in uh, the eyeball areas. So that's enough showing off of our hands-on collection. And now I'm going to show you our tools, my tools. I like to keep these uh, rubber hose handles on them to protect them. <clears throat> I'm missing one knife out of this collection that I wanted to show you. So <clears throat> in, uh, in almost every collection, you're going to see an artist will have a large straight knife. This is actually a medium one. And you hold them like this. A lot of times I'll use my fingers to, to uh, help control my knife and, and to actually give me a little more thrust. But uh, you, you, use, you use your thumb for leverage. So that's the straight knife. The knife I couldn't locate in time for this uh, lecture was uh, my baby straight. It's really cute. Uh, then you have the curved knives for carving around the um, ovoid areas and for carving the scooped out areas. So there's a large, uh, you hear people call these a hook knife too. There's a large uh, curved knife. And then you're also gonna need a small one because you have some really tight uh, curved areas to carve out too. And then um, for the fine lines, somebody showed me, uh, I wonder if I can, let's see, how good of a shot can you get here? This is really a very, how about if I move, nope. Let me see here. This is really a very, um, there we go. It's a miniature V gouge. And it's so easy to use. I used to, <clears throat> before I even heard of the V gouge, I used to carve, I used to carve my fine lines and my outlines by carving one direction, by carving one direction like this, and then turn it around and carve the other direction like that. And then somebody introduced me to the V gouge and lo and behold, you can just outline your whole carving the whole fine lines with the small V gouge. So I added that to my collection. <clears throat> and then last of all, uh, this isn't a very common tool, but I like it. Um, it's good for, it's good for um, carving out these areas in here. This, uh, this eye area, the deep side, the, the part that would be carved out deep is right toward the corners of these eyes. Um, some people will get that backwards and they'll carve the eyes like this, like this trigon shape, but it's actually a taper that goes toward the deep end here. And I'll just show you really quick. I hope I don't mess up now. carving that deep area out. This is red cedar I'm carving, by the way. I like to carve yellow cedar. It's got really tight grain. And red cedar sometimes splinters because the grain is so loose. But it's soft wood. It's really easy to carve. So I can I can take this wood out of here, this meat out of here, either by carving into 
that uh, slant with this straight knife, or I could use this knife and push it toward that. But um, I, I trust this knife here to do that. The, the sharper your tools, the better, the cleaner job you will be doing here. So that comes right out of there. And then if necessary, I could touch it up with that, uh, that other um, triangular shaped knife that I just showed you. But I don't think I'll need to clean that out of there. <clears throat> and then, so you see how that um, shallow carving also looks like it has some depth when the shade hits it a certain way. See that? And I hardly even carved anything out of there. So I could clean it up with this tool here. But I'm not going to spend too much time on that. I just want to show you what these tools do. <laughs> this, um, this tertiary S area here, this is going to be the deep side. I'm going to carve straight down and then it's going to angle down toward the deep side. So I'm just going to do a part of this. I'll do the corner of this mouth here. Let's see, I got to make sure I'm carving in the right direction of the grain. Um, okay, I'll get it right. Probably making you dizzy turning this around and around. Let's see here. Yeah, okay, I had it right the first time. So I'm gonna carve this rather deep. I try to get it in as few cuts as possible. So if you have good arm muscles, that's a plus. And then I just cut that tapering line and it's going to pop right out of there. And you see that's starting to look like it has uh, has some depth to it too. I could carve it deeper than that and give it even more of a, um, so even more shade hits it. But it's all shallow carving. <clears throat> now, the last part I want to uh, show you is the, uh, the curved out areas. So I would actually, um, I would actually want to put a little fine line around here. The nice thing about painting the black first is if you get a little bit wobbly, you'll correct it by carving it. You end up with really crisp lines if you paint the black first and then and then do the carving. It feels so good to carve. I don't know what it what it is. It's just a really nice uh, Zen feeling. So I could do this a, a couple different ways. I could make an outline all the way around it. I could have this, uh, I could carve straight down here and just do a tapered cut down to the deep line there or I could give it that really gentle dished out shape. And I do like the dished out shape. It, it's got a really soft softness to it. Oops, I'm gonna have to touch that up with paint later. <clears throat> so anyway, I, I would touch that up with paint and then, uh, and then I would outline it with a, a V tool to make it stand out a little bit better. 
So I, I kind of goofed there where I carved away some of the black, but I could paint it back on afterwards. <clears throat> um, and then, uh, of course, around the eye is the U shape that I was mentioning. Almost always you use the um, you use the uh, the uh, hook knife, the curved knife to carve around the eye. And so that's that. So that's how you use the different tools. And, uh, and one of the things that happened over time was <clears throat> with the introduction of metal tools, the uh, the carvers were able to carve away more wood. A long time ago, the the carvings were um, were really um, solid. The the form line was really solid. Let me see if I can find an example in this book here. This is a book by Steve Brown, and he talks about how the art form evolved over time. And I just want to find, yeah. These um, these old these old boxes here. Uh, let me uh, let me get a little bit closer here. And that's not showing up too well. But you can see <clears throat> there's there's hardly any. There's hardly any um, carved out areas around the ovoids, um, hardly any carving at all. Let me find another example if I can. Yeah, these, this is a really old box here. And you can see there's hardly any carving on it at all. It's really old. And then over time, um, <clears throat> with better tools, they were able to um, they were able to remove more more wood, and what happened was because they were able to remove more wood, that made the black form lines disappear. The black form lines got thinner, and the tertiary and secondary areas enlarged. So you can see that um, this is actually an evolutionary art form that uh, changes with the introduction of new materials, with new tool technology, with new ideas. It, it's constantly changing, but you do need to go back to the basics. You do need to uh, study the classical period in order to understand the rules that we just went over. Um, <clears throat> I want to show you, uh, I'm almost done here. Um, let's see, I was told, oh gosh, I took a little longer than I was gonna. Um, <clears throat> so with those, um, with the ability to break rules now, I just go fill up a sketchbook with as many different weird stuff as I can. Let me zoom out a little bit. And I just try to do something different every day. Some of them are successful and they're going to become uh, diff uh, larger paintings. Some of them are just good practice, but I have, uh, I have pages and pages of um, all kinds of uh, experimentation. Some of them I really like. And some are just kind of blah, but that's all right. But anyway, I have uh, three books full that uh, when I retire pretty soon, uh, these are going to be my homework. They're, they're going to become large paintings. And uh, uh, with that, I'm going to end with, um, I'm going to end with, uh, 
a, a reading. I, I wasn't planning on giving a reading here. Let's see, I need to figure out how to change my camera here. Oh, there I am. All right, I'm going to end with a um, poem that I wrote about carving. It's called Carving. Imagine that. Kashan, old man, master carver, perched on alder chopping block. Sleek killer whale dives in his palm. Slice, chip, gouge, flick. Pungent cedar escapes. My tools stay so sharp this way, just from use, Kashan explains. Is he playing with me? I can't tell. He puffs into the blowhole, cedar shaving spray. Pointing with the tip of his knife, he tells me the importance of design the overlapping form line, how the central ovoid repeats itself. At his feet, haphazard curled spirals, circles and intermittent commas form like some kind of calligraphy or magical equation. The carver leans toward me. Does the wind around raven, sculpt raven? Or does raven sculpt the wind around himself? Did the tide flats emerge? Or is that tide woman pulling back her blanket? What matters is not what's left to the eye, but what's taken away. That mistake that little slip I made yesterday, good or bad, is what I'm left with today. Caution, swimming in my head, casting out my urgent things of the day. I can't listen too long to Caution without getting lost. I don't tell him. What we omit sometimes is of the same consequence as what's brought out. So thank you for coming today. This went a little longer than I intended to. Um, I don't know if I can unmute everybody. Okay, so you can uh, unmute yourselves now. If you have any questions, I can do question and answer. Thanks, Robert. I really enjoyed it. Yes, Robert. Thanks so much for doing this uh, for the friends. It was great. I've never had the, the knife works explained like that. I've heard about the form lines, but then watching somebody working with the knives and telling how they're used. I really appreciate that. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks for coming today, everybody. Enjoy your very fine day. Thank you. Bye now. Bye. Thanks, Robert, Daryl, and Bernadette. We really enjoyed it. Learned a lot. Thank Take you. Care. Thank you for doing this. My pleasure. A nice, a nice blending of design and words, Robert. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.